Hey everybody, this is Nate and I have a word for you today. Something that's just been burning my spirit probably for the last three or four days that God's just been compounding on and I can't wait to release that over you today. And I, I don't just want to release something that's just knowledge. I feel like today there is... There is something the Lord is saying is tangible that we can grab hold of. Anything that I believe that God is speaking on is an invitation for us to grab hold of. And so I just want to just thank you, Jesus, for the atmosphere of this broadcast. There is no, there is no space in between us. For there is, we're in one place together and you are moving in our behalf. So I thank you, Jesus. Holy Spirit, come and invade this broadcast with your glory. Come and manifest yourself. Come pour out your spirit afresh upon, Lord God. What, Father, just what I release over these people, Lord. I thank you, Jesus, that we are in a time of new beginnings. The Holy Spirit, we welcome you. Come have your way today, Holy Spirit. Welcome, guys. Good to see you. Let me know where you're from if it's your first time on here. I just have this word. It's um, In a lot of ways, it's a really simple word. I, I feel like this is just... um. A very simple word from a vision that God gave me, and uh, I want to share it. Many of you have probably already read it about the the, the, the vision I had about the books of destiny. Um, God kind of ambushed me um, th- three nights ago as I was going to bed, and uh, I had this vision of the books of destiny, and God was speaking to me about uh, what He's doing then. And I'm, I want to—I really feel like maybe I should, should quickly share and show you what God spoke to me about these different aspects of the books of destiny, because uh, many people might find themselves in in different one of these areas. And uh, but the main thing I want to prophesy that there is the new page. God is turning a new page in your life, and so. Um, I want to share this vision with you. Um, so I was, like I said, Holy Spirit totally ambushed me. Um, it seems like I'm in a season right now that God is doing that in the middle of the night or midnight or something like that. He's just He's showing me things and speaking to me, and it's just been um, more than anything. It's not just for revelation. It's just because um, He's He's doing something new with me, and uh, you know, just in the area of just deeper intimacy. And I've just been so hungry for Him. I feel like it's a real season that if we are just really hungry and we set ourselves. And position ourselves for him he's just gonna come it's just an amazing season so I just bless you guys thank you father for for the deeper for the deeper places for more intimacy father for the just the, the place of stillness that you you're taking all of us Lord God I thank you Jesus that for those who are trying to look for answers and trying to find remedies and strategies and all these things for their life God that they would find it in you Jesus it is all in you Jesus Wow, thank you, Jesus, feeling his presence already. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. So I had this vision, and um, and it was uh, quite a clear vision. And so there was many, there was different aspects that God wanted me to see. But I saw the Lord, and he was, he had all these different books he was opening, and it was so much, he had such a, a tender care in the way he was opening these books. And I knew there was something, like he was opening them, and they, they meant a lot to him. And I knew straight away that he was opening the pages of people's lives. This was it was people's destiny books and and he was opening them up but um he said so much love like he was like proud like he was like wow these these are my kids and this is their destiny it's almost like you know when your kids come back from from preschool or, or school and they've got like a story they've written you know like that you're reading it and, then, and they're telling the story of their weekend and you're so proud of them and you know you're just like well you know they spelled a few words wrong but it doesn't matter you're just like this is beautiful this is my this is my daughter or this is this is my son or whatever it might be and you just so much you're just like oh man and that's kind of how I felt. It was like this overwhelming, like Jesus, like, wow, that's my, that's my boy. That's my girl. It was like that. But as he was opening them, uh, I was highlighted on about four or five different things that I saw. And the first thing I saw was that um, there were disjointed chapters. Um, you know, and Chris and I do a lot of writing. And so I understand there's a frustration of when you're writing and there's no continuity. And it's like... Um, you know, chapter four didn't seem to match chapter five and vice versa. It was like these different thoughts or different themes. And it just seemed like it was a bit disjointed. And so I was watching this and then I moved on to the next thing I saw and that there were torn pages in these books. And the the third thing I saw was there were blank pages. And the fourth thing was I saw sentences that seemed to trail off. And uh, the thought that came to me was like, as as if someone falls asleep. Um, When I saw it, it wasn't typing, it was written. It was like somebody had written and then, you know, kind of struck their pen across the page. And then the last thing I saw, it was like the the Lord, he just flipped open the book and it was all these empty pages ready to be written. I was like, wow. And I knew that was the main theme of, uh, of this 
this revelation that he was giving me. But then I, I kind of sat there and like any person should do, I processed it with the Lord and I wrote it down. So Lord, what are you saying? And so I want to share a few of these different things and maybe God wants to speak to you through one of these different ways. And then I want to prophesy over you at the end. So make sure you wait till the end. I want to prophesy over you um, something. But God said to me that the disjointed chapters were chapters of transition. And many people have found themselves in chapter, in this season of the life that they've been in transition. And for the, for the body of Christ has been in a transition. So this is all of us. But this chapters of transition is I want to define it as those who felt like they've not understood where they're at. It's like they're looking back at all the seasons of their life and going, how does that season seem to match this one? Why am I here? I don't understand what's going on. I was there. Maybe for some of you are like, well, my last season was great. I don't know why I'm here. I don't understand. Everything seems to be disjointed. And what it's done is it's caused this kind of place of, of hope deferred because you've been like, well, I don't know now where I'm going. I don't know what my vision is anymore. I'm, I'm, I'm kind of feel like I'm wandering around in the dark. I can't seem to reconcile my life. And it's this disjointed feeling like your story is, is got many gaps in it. And, um, you know, for many people, this is where they're being at and they're being frustrated. It's, seen, it's caused this kind of place of, of even con, um, frustration with the Lord of God. Why am I here? Like there's, I've even sensed there's even people on here right now. I feel like the Lord's just going to heal some areas where you've been even frustrated at him of like, God, why am I here? I don't understand. And he's saying, just trust me. Trust me with what I'm doing in your life. This is the response. It sounds crazy. This is the response to your yes. You don't always see. Sometimes we're, we're looking at our life from this perspective of right above where we're at. God's looking at it from this, from this macro perspective and he's looking down and he can see the whole, he can see the the whole timeline. He can see all the chapters together and how they flow. He can see one one season of your life and go, but God, that was filled with so much drama and I don't get how this connects. And he's like, trust me with this. And this is what I, I want to actually write down the exact words that I wrote as well as not just what I'm saying. And he said, only I can connect what needs to be connected. Only I can orchestrate what needs to be orchestrated. Where you see inconsistency and lack of direction, I've been redirecting you. I'm making the chapters of your life all come together in this season as you lean into me trust me and allow me to do what only I can do wow this is powerful I just was so encouraged personally by that but then I saw the time um, God was speaking to me about the torn pages and this one here I, just, I feel like there is just going to be many people healed from this particular one in, in, and this is what I saw as torn pages and they were ripped out like it was like a, a good rip you know out of this out of this book and uh, I said, Lord, what does this mean? And he said, it represents failure, ruin. And I saw broken marriages, loss, disaster that had come against people in their homes, their ministries, their mandate, all this stuff. It was like the unexpected things that had come against people. And it's like, you know, you've been tracking along and, you know, you see the, 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 the book of your life is just being written suddenly. It's just like the pages just get ripped out and, and so much disaster and different things have come against people. And it's just been like, oh, what is going on? What is happening? What is happening to my life and it's caused people to be in so much trauma and pain and I heard the Lord say this the page of your life is this page of your life the place where you stop see this is the thing when you go through trauma and pain you stop you completely stop in that place and you don't move from that place you are planted there unable to write forward unable to move forward you get stuck in that place and then the Lord said to me this that that page of your life that that situation happened is not the end now watch me make it your brand new beginning I'm healing your heart right now and turning the page for you where you, you will begin to hope again, love again, and dream again. And um, then God highlighted to me as I was sitting there in his presence, I, I, I was highlighted the, the word rejection syndrome came to me. And I was like, well, what does that mean? Like, I understand... I understand rejection. Trust me, I have been through rejection. I had, it's been, actually was a major roadblock in my life uh, where I had to really allow the Lord to deal with it because it was stopping me from moving forward. So I get rejection. But I heard the word rejection syndrome. I'm going, what does rejection syndrome mean? Now, syndrome added to rejection actually insinuates that rejection is the trigger that derails you. Rejection is the trigger that causes you to go into a swirl 
in your life, that pull, like a, almost like a, a whirlwind, pulling everything in that completely derails you. And I heard the Lord say, oh, I feel his presence on this. I heard the Lord say that the rejection syndrome is ending. It's where you've been through such rejection and that trigger, the enemy's been on that trigger in this season like this. I'm just feeling the power of God. There's people going, I break that rejection off your life right now in Jesus' mighty name. It's where you've been, the enemy's been pulling that trigger, pulling, you've been feeling that rejection that's caused you to go into a swirl. It's pulled everything to this world. You've been unable to move forward. And it's, it's that torn pages of your life. You're sitting there in the mess going, God, I don't know how to move forward. I don't believe in myself. I, I, I don't understand what's going on. I, I just have no confidence anymore. The enemy's been really playing on that old wound. Those wounds are being healed right now. That trauma is being healed right now in Jesus' mighty name. Just allow me, if that's you right now and you're like, oh, you know, I, I just need to sit in his presence. Do that right now. I feel like just sit in his presence right now and allow him to come say, Holy Spirit, come into that place where I've been living under the, in rejection, where I've been living just in complete hurt and pain and trauma. Just release that to him right now. You're going to begin to feel fresh. You're going to, even if it involves, you know, praying, blessing somebody, forgiving people, release it right now. You watch what it's going to do. It's going to set you free. It's going to set you free. Just, there's going to be a laughter and a joy that comes as you release and say, God, those people hurt me. Like, they don't understand me. They're, they're, mis they're just not understanding who I am. They're, they're just not seeing me the way you see me, God. And I just want to tell them. I just want them to know that they did the wrong thing. I just want them to know that they hurt me, that they made me feel like I was an outcast. outcast. And God's like saying, just release them, forgive them, and you watch what I'm going to do in your life. So just allow him to do that right now. Oh, wow. It's really annoying on that. And then the blank pages. The blank pages, uh, I said, Lord, what are the blank, blank pages? Because you have to, the way I've got to paint the picture of this is, is there was pages after it. So the blank pages were in, like, you know, almost, almost like when you see uh, a, a book that there's a fault in it. You know, it's like, well, where's it? why is that blank page in there? You know, the editors obviously did a bad job. And um, he said, this is what the Lord said to me. I asked him what it was, and this is how he responded. What looks like waiting isn't fruitless. And what looks like wasting is actually worship. What looks like waiting isn't fruitless, and what looks like wasting is actually worship. And this is a season of people's life, they feel like that they've been waiting, and nothing's happened, and they've been waiting, and their story is just blank pages in the way, and that's the way they're seeing them. And the Lord is saying, I'm orchestrating right now what you can't. This is back to the transition. It's this very similar thing. It's, God, I, I, you just have to trust Him. Say, God, I've been waiting for a long time for this to come to pass and it hasn't. God's like, you watch what I'm going to do. Allow, just trust me in the waiting. Allow me when your life looks blank. I'm preparing you. I'm actually doing the most in your life right now. That's what he's saying. And the, 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 um, the second last thing I wanted, that I saw was where the sentences trail off. And it was uh, what, what I thought about it was like, like I said earlier about how it's almost like when someone falls asleep behind the pen and it like, you know, there's a word and then it kind of trails off the page, you know. And um, I was like, what's going on? And this is what the Lord said. He said, where many have grown weary and fallen asleep, I'm coming to renew strength. And I will not only rejuvenate and reinstate them, but I will finish their sentences this will be a season for many that have felt derailed and disillusioned that you're going to feel like you're getting back on the horse again. This is where you felt like the promises of God haven't come to pass. He's like, I'm going to fulfill those promises. I'm not done with you yet. You feel like your life is just trailed off and the words have stopped. And maybe many, I feel many prophets and people out there, the, the words have stopped. You felt muzzled. You feel like suddenly I've got no words. No, nothing's flowing from me again. I don't know what's going on in me. God's going to continue this and he's going to rewrite. He's going to do those things in you right now. I feel like the Lord is saying, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start the sentences back again. But he's asking you right now that he's, he's awakening strength and he's awakening where you've fallen asleep because there's been so many things going on around you. So much warfare. You've gone, I, 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 I got nothing in me anymore, God. I feel like many ministers and pastors and leaders, even watching this right now, you've been feeling empty. You've been feeling in this season lost. And you're like, I got no more words. I got no more answers. I'm tired of always being pulled on. I don't know what to do. I've been running on empty. God's like, I'm going to refuel you. I'm going to refresh you. You're going to wake up feeling fresh. You're going to wake up feeling a new passion in you again. Oh, Robo God, I thank you, Holy Spirit, right now, just for that you're just bringing healing and refreshing to people right now. And the last thing, I, just, I can't wait. This is the whole point of this broadcast, but I knew I needed to share that. It's the pages I saw in the book, and they were all empty, but 
It was the pages that God was saying, this is an invitation to come right with me. This is an invitation. He's saying, come write history with me. Do not. He's saying, don't give up. This is the time. This is the season. We're going to write history together. This is a season you've been waiting for. It's now. Don't discredit it. Don't discount it. This is not a season to fall back and allow all these things that have been surrounding you to take you out. This is a season you're going to write history. Let's do it together. And he's just calling out to us. He's saying, let's write it together. It's going to look different. It's going to look completely different. I'm going to have to, I'm, I've been removing the things from your shoulders that have held you back in the past seasons. I'm, I'm, I'm taking you through those things to remove them right now because I don't want you with, I don't want you walking with that clutter. Let's write history together again. Pick up that pen again and you're picking it up and you're trembling. Say, God, I've forgotten how to write. I don't even know what's in me anymore. And he's like, that's okay because it's in my strength. It's not by might nor by power, but by the Spirit, says the Lord. You're going to pick up the pen. You're going to feel that fresh unction again. Again, God's saying that you, those areas of your life, you say, God, I've completely thrown that in the dust. You're going to feel that fresh thing. You're going to pick it up again. You're like, this is, this is who I am. I'm, I'm, I'm going to run with this again. You're going to feel that fresh strength to do that. You're going to feel that fresh passion to do that again. I better actually read what I wrote down for this one. It's a new day of history to be written, said the Lord. And there's going to be a joy that you wake up with to run with what God's placed inside you. But this is the thing. This is the thing I felt the Lord say, it's going to look so different. It's going to look so different. In a, see, we're in a new day. We're in a, in a new era right now. We're not just, you know, one season to the next. Oh, la -di -da. We're in a new era. What that means is, is that we've been transitioning into something that looks completely different to what it looked like in the past season. Churches and, and people that, you know, in leadership, God's had to really do a huge work in them because he's changing the paradigm. He's like, we've been we've, in areas that we've been dwelling on a certain uh um, I guess operating system. He's like, you need to come into the fresh thing. The crossing of a season we've been in. You apply that personally. God's like, you need to let go of us so much. But when you pick up what I give you, you're gonna you're gonna have to adjust your your, your perspective because it's gonna look completely different. The way you operate in the past season won't look like this one. As you write history with me, it's going to be a fresh thing. You're gonna feel a fresh breath of the Holy Ghost upon you, and it's not gonna look completely different what to what it looked like in the past season. And you know, Christy and I um, have been seeing, Christy actually saw it a lot um, for a lot um, earlier than me. She's probably been seeing this probably about the last year, but she's been seeing 888 everywhere all the time, like all the time. And then somehow I caught it and I've been seeing it as well. And um, just this morning when we're out, we saw it three times, 888. And God's been speaking to us through that number about new beginnings. And I think I put up a few posts about that recently, um, about different cars. I saw a new disc uh, a car that was like, um, uh, what was it? Um, Ford Discovery had Discovery and then it was um, 888 and I uh, forgot something else in there as well. Joy 888, that's what I saw. And I just knew as God's speaking about the joy that's going to burst over people as you step into your new day. It is a new beginning. God's like saying, no, no, no. It's not like you're not coming to this new season, like, you know, carrying bags with you. You're coming in. You're coming in and it's a fresh day. You're coming in with the shirt on your back and he's going to give you what you need. What are you trying to bring? What are you trying to carry over that he's been asking you to let go of? What are those, I'm gonna be, let's just be real a minute. What are those friendships, relationships, alignments that you've been in that been holding you back, trying to keep you into a place of who you were when God's speaking to you who you are and where you're going? Sometimes you need to let go of some things. Sometimes you need to say, God, I, I, I embrace the new beginning. And sometimes that means actually stepping into the new beginning with with just what you have. He's like, I'm going to give you the fresh thing. You're going to have to let go of a lot of the things you did and the way you did them and just be obedient to that. Sometimes it looks like foolishness when God says, step out. Sometimes it looks like you, people are going to go, wow, that is the dumbest decision of their life. That is a risk. That is That doesn't make any sense. And sometimes you're going to have to just listen to him to step into the fresh thing. You're putting on a new coat and a new mantle. You're like, yeah, this this is different. I, I don't know what to think about this. And, and, and God's like, yeah, but it suits you. You wait to see what it does. You wait to see what these new beginnings are going to look like. And so I just really feel that strongly. Then, you know, 888 in the Bible actually represents regeneration, resurrection, a new era, 
a new data pioneer because I believe many people are going to be pioneering fresh, like new data pioneer in the days to come. I believe we're going to hear new sounds of worship release we've never heard before. I believe we're going to hear themes and, 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 and we're going to hear voc the vocabulary of heaven in a fresh new way. There are going to be some new things come to the throne room like, wow, what is that? And it's going to carry the fresh thing on it. We're going to see these people step into this new, uh, this new capacity of understanding, you know, God and the length and breadth and, and width and height of him and understanding all that he is and all that he wants us to be is we're entering into that place right now but I hear God saying get out of the rut get out get the, get rid of the overheads I'm dealing with the things that are needing needed to be dealt with I'm removing the clutter and I'm removing the things that have the potential to hold you back or to remind you and try to pull you back into an old wine season when I want you to move with the new God is saying shift with me move with me Wow. And watch it happen in my strength and not your own anymore. But this is the thing. I, I was, as I was preparing this just before, I heard God say to me, don't just tell them there's a new beginning. Prophesy there's a new beginning. So I don't know what that looks like, but I need to prophesy over you right now before we end that there is a new beginning for you. So before I do that, I just want to share a few things. Jesus said this amazing scripture. Jesus says, no one rips up a new garment to make patches for an old, worn out one. If you tear up the new to make a patch for the old, it will not match the old garment. And who pours new wine into an old wineskin? If someone did, the old wineskin would burst and the new wine would be lost. New wine must always be poured into new wineskins. Yet you say the old ways are better and you refuse to taste even the new that I bring. Man, Jesus is speaking there about that you're going to have to completely detach sometimes. You're going to have to completely surrender and yield to what he's doing in your life. And uh, Christy and I were just talking about this before and, and she was just thinking about, we, we were just out before and we saw this construction going on um, around us where we were. And she's like, isn't it interesting in a, in a new beginning or a season of a new beginning, you know, it doesn't always look glamorous. It's not like someone hands you a ticket and says, here you go, here's a new beginning. And it sometimes looks like mess. It sometimes looks like you're in a construction zone. Maybe you're looking out at an empty plot of land and it doesn't excite you because you know there's a lot of work in having to build what God's going to build on you. But this is the thing, it's Him. And maybe right now you're looking out and you're going, well, I, I can't see how that's going to take shape. I'm seeing, I'm seeing a little bit of, I'm seeing some of the, the paneling go up. I, I don't know how that's going to look. And you're starting to doubt even God, what's going on. Don't disregard the new beginning. Don't devalue the new beginning just because it's a new beginning. Just because it looks like starting from scratch in some areas. Because it carries greater glory upon it. The very thing you've been crying out for is in this season. The very thing you've been craving and longing for is in the new thing that he's pouring out upon you. As you embrace it, as you yield to the spirit, the more is going to come. The greater glory, you've been saying, God, I'm longing for the fresh, for the fresh fire. I'm wanting to encounter you. Oh, I, I don't care about all these things anymore, God. It's all about you. It's in, the, it's in what you yield to. It's in what you, as you're obedient to step into that place, that he pours out that greater thing he wants to do in your life. So just yield to them in this season. I want to prophesy of you right now that it is a new day that new pages are yet to be written and you are going to write history with God. I prophesy a new beginning over you right now in Jesus' mighty name where you've been struggling in the in the end of that past season, still holding a lot of stuff, I prophesy that it is a new beginning over you. I, I just feel like I understand now why God wanted me to speak it forth. He wanted me to speak it forth because it's going to detach you from some of those old things. The so Father, I prophesy over every single person watching this and replaying this, a new beginning in Jesus' mighty name. A new beginning in Jesus' mighty name. A new beginning, resurrection, regeneration. In the name of Jesus, new blueprints being handed to them, God. New assignments being given to them, Father. A new community and tribe and people to run with. Many people are going to translocate. God's going to give you a heart for a different city and a different place. Say yes, God, and receive what he's going to pour out to you. It is a new day and it is a new beginning for you. Say, God, I let go. I let go of the old. 
It's painful because I feel like in some areas I, I, I want to I wanna hold on to that or maybe my glory days were back there. God's saying, no, your glory days are ahead. Your, your best days are yet to come. Your best days are yet to come. And you trust him and you yield to him. You watch what he's going to do. I just bless that to you guys right now in Jesus' mighty name. I feel the fire on me right now. I'm just going to quickly release this over people. Wow, I feel like there's a fire. You know, I said it in my video last week, there's a fresh fire in this season to take you higher. You know, when, when you're going through stuff, you need, you need the fire, you need to come up higher. I just, I just feel that fire again, I just feel that same fire and I feel that, that flavor, it just feels like that, it's, it's, a, it's a coming higher. Father, release the fire of heaven over people, God. The fire of heaven to pursue his presence, God. Father, to come into the throne room of grace and to sit at your feet and to receive from you, Jesus. To receive from you, Jesus. To receive from you. What if nothing else mattered around you? What if you're looking from eternity at your life right now and you imagine one day you're in the throne room surrounded by all the saints, all the witnesses of heaven and we're worshiping Jesus and we're singing worthy, 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 worthy of you. You are all that matters, Jesus. None of this other stuff. I feel like he's just decluttering us from the things that don't matter, that carry no, have no sense of eternity on it. And if we can look through that perspective, we'll go, God, I'm running towards you. I'm not looking at those people, those situations or things anymore, God. I'm looking through the lens of eternity and I'm going, this is, this is, I need to push forward. I need to jump. I need to, I need to, I need to step into that place of risk to receive all that you have for me. I need to let go of my old, my old wine skin, even though I'm used to it. I know how it sits. I know, I know how, I know how to operate it. God's like, yeah, but I'm giving you something that you, you're going to have to get used to, but it's so much more. It carries so much more on it. So Father, I thank you, Lord God, for every single person that is watching this right now, Lord God, that they receive what you, not me, that you want to give to them, God that you want to give to them, the downloads you want to give to them, the healings that you want to give to them. Father, right now, to see someone's throat, this whole area, I don't know if it could be thyroid, but I feel like all this whole area be healed in the mighty name of Jesus. Be healed in the mighty name of Jesus. You see the fire of God just coming over the back of someone's. I feel like there's even just, uh, even just where someone is, is, right now you're feeling like a torment. Lift off you right now in the name of Jesus, but you're feeling like a torment. You've been feeling like voices and things coming against you. I break that off you right now in the name of Jesus. That thing will no longer hold you back. Those lies will not no longer to hold you in, a, in that place anymore in Jesus' mighty name. I, just, I speak fire of God in the bellies and intestines. Father, I speak the fire of God over bodies right now. Legs be healed. Father, arms be healed. Father, Father, for organs, livers, hearts, Lord God, kidneys. Everything be healed in the mighty, mighty name of Jesus. Let the fire of God be released. Lord God, that it'll be not just a new day, Lord God, in people's situations, but it'll be a new, it'll be a new day over people's bodies, Father. They'll be able to get up and run. This will be a new day of strength for people, Lord God. Just say, yeah, I receive strength from my body right now because I need my I need my body to be able to be strong so I can run the race that God has for me. Say, yes, God, I want my body to be whole. I just thank you, Jesus, that you are the healer. And we thank you for your healing. We thank you for resurrection and power and life in this new season to get out and run with the call of God upon us in Jesus mighty name. I'll just bless you guys. Before I go, I just want to um, just want to share with you. In one month, we start our third season of Grow Mentoring. It's called Harvest, and we are talking. It's it's really it's an impartation from Christy and I about what we've walked through in ministry wise and understanding gifts, callings, abilities, and how to walk that out and understand what you're called to. And we just can't wait to impart and release that to people in the season to help people understand why they are here. But it's also just going to be an impartation of of of, of just intimacy with the Lord. And and walking that out, I just really feel like um, you know that there are just people in season going, what What am I even created for? So, if you want to check that out, go to mygeartogrow.com. Um, bless you guys. Thanks for coming on here, and I'll talk to you guys soon. Bless you. Bye.